My next guest was one of the big winners last weekend at UFC 268, getting that first round finish over Phil Haas. It's Chris Curtis back here on the program. Chris, how's it going, man? It's coming. It's going good, man. It's uh, it's going real good. It's really weird right now, but it's a good weird. Yeah, I was going to ask you, has it sunk in yet that you have your first UFC? Not only are you in the UFC, you have your first win and you did it at Madison Square Garden. Like, has that even sunk in yet? It's like finally like real. Because I'm telling you, man, I woke up yesterday and I talked to my manager. I was like, bro, what did we just do? <laughs> He's like, yeah, man, it's crazy. Yeah. And uh, it, it's it's like a real thing now. But like, you know, it's kind of, I kind of digested it a little bit more. I'm just mm-hmm. like, all right, what do we do next? So I'm just like, all right, well, let's, go, let's just go do something. Like, screw it. So. Yeah, it's yeah. strange, but it's real. Yeah, and it's well deserved, man. Again, uh, we talked uh, right right up to the fight. I was curious how fight week was leading into things. Again, it was a you know uh, sort of a quick thing of how it all came together. But uh, did you get to enjoy fight week at all? Yeah, it was fine, man. It just felt like fight week to me. Like you know, that was fight number thirty five for me. So I've done a lot of different fight weeks a lot of times. Uh, fight to eighty five is really easy. Fight week, kind of just walked around New York. You know, I didn't have to really cut too much weight, so I could eat. I wasn't starving, wasn't miserable. Workouts were good. Just a regular fight week, man. We were just walking around New York, being bored, uh, getting lost. How was it with Strickland? I saw that one video where he was trying to get your manager to expose himself. Uh, that that didn't seem to work out too well. But how, how was it getting to do a fight week with him, man? It's uh, he done a few fight weeks with Sean. It's just Sean. Like we hung out bored listen to him rant about like politics and how much people suck watch him go assault people at other gym it's a good time like nothing, nothing out of the ordinary uh yeah. no one got arrested no one got hurt it's, been, it's a good week there you go and of course you get the big win there uh could the fight gone any better man you, you don't get paid by the hour uh probably i mean it sucks like looking back on it you watch it's not as bad as it feels but like you know he's possibly such a big dude i kind of got moved around a lot i got bored a little bit I didn't take any damage, but like, you know, in the, uh, in not taking damage, it makes it look worse than it was. I'm just like, ah, uh, it's everywhere now, but whatever. I won, not stop the guy I wasn't supposed to beat, quote unquote. So what more do I, you know, it couldn't have gone any better. Have you finished a fight like that before? I was trying to remember like that early. Like I was, I was trying to think like recently, what, what's a fight that comes to mind that sort of replicated that performance? God, my CT is kicking in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, guess I the mean, last first yeah. round was probably the uh, icon up out in Mexico. Right. But okay. Nobody, I mean, but that's, you know, Phil Hall is a different level. So that was yeah. the first big, big fight I can remember in a while that got stopped that early. Yeah. Um, how did you celebrate after the win? Again, first UFC victory, you're in Madison Square Garden, you're in New York. Like, like what was that like for you? Guys, I'm 34. We went out, we got pizza, then I went to sleep. There you I go. Actually, I actually to go to sleep. I kind of like played on my Instagrams. We had to fly out at like four in the morning. Mm-hmm. So I got some pizza, then went back to my hotel room. I'm too old to party and celebrate. <laughs> you and me both, man. I'm I'm a little bit older than you, so I, I can totally relate to that. Um, I'm in bed by ten now. Like, let's be real. Like, it's, nine, it's, nine. Not- I, I got you beat. I, mind you, I got two kids, but uh, you know, still, it's it's one of those things where uh, you know I, I got to be in bed early. But uh, you also fight for a living too, so a little bit different there. Um, what about the feedback from just everyone? Because again, people in the know <laughs> knew you should have been here a while ago. So what was that like getting to see all this positive feedback, especially because you did it, you got the win. Bro, it has been absolutely crazy. So. The best and worst thing about fighting are the fans because sometimes they can be terrible, but like times like this, I've never seen like so much love and support, man. Like I seriously have responded to about 600 messages because like it's my first UFC win. There's so much love and support. So I've been responding to like 600 messages. I'm just like, oh, there's like a thousand more in my inbox still. I haven't gotten to, mm-hmm. but you know, there's so I'm getting from all over the world. People are sending me their betting slips. Like, holy, like, you're like, holy crap, man. Like, you know, people have made some serious money. Then I get a lot of people laughing. They have, like, losing slips. Like, you killed my parlay. <laughs> but even when people, you know, I'm killing their parlays, they're still like, you deserved it, man. Congrats. So I've gotten so much love from, like, you know, my family and friends and teammates. But also, you know, just everywhere. I've got so much love from, like, England and Ireland and freaking uh, Turkey and, like, uh, so many, like, Kazakhstan. But I've got it's it's crazy. Like I've gotten so much love from everywhere. So it's been absolutely awesome. What's the biggest bet someone won that you knew of uh, in terms of money? How how much does someone win on your fight? Uh one guy, I know one guy showed me a percent ticket where he won like twenty grand on me. What? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah like people were betting the house and like one guy won twenty grand on me. I know a few people that won around ten, but like yeah, one guy won like twenty grand. That, that's great. Did you know if uh did Strickland bet on your fight at all? I don't know if he bets or not. 
Dude, Strickland's a dragon with money. He doesn't spend money. He doesn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> he never catch Strickland betting. Yeah, that dude's no. like a dragon hoarding a pile of gold. He doesn't spend money. Was there anyone that reached out that maybe you weren't expecting to hear from? Maybe someone you don't even know that kind of said, hey, man, congrats on the win. Anything like that? Dude, just tons of people, man. Like, no, it's just, I mean, there's people from everywhere. Uh, a lot of the people I train with, uh, comms out, hit me up, like, good job, which is always Really? Hamza Chimaya, like, I got in touch with you? Yeah. Dude, he's a, he, he hit me up, a good job. But he, he trained on the extreme for a while. I got to train with him for, like, a, like a, a month or two. He's a really good dude, really nice dude. So that was funny. Because, uh, I mean, just, you know, I got tons of people and freaking, like, uh, people from Kazakhstan are hitting me up. I got a lot of fans in Kazakhstan, apparently. I was like, oh, I didn't know that was a thing. But, like, yeah, like, uh a lot of guys in Dagestan. So it, it's, it's just funny, man. We get a lot of fans everywhere. It's just really weird to see, but it's really fun to see. And I got to ask, just cause you brought it up in the last interview after that win party, you thinking about that ex-girlfriend that said you'd never make it. Did that cross your mind at all after the fight? Oh, hell yeah. I was like, I hope she's like, <laughs> oh, she probably doesn't care, but I hope at some point that it like sticks there. I'm like, ah, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that, that's good, man. That's awesome. Um, I'm, petty, obviously- I'm petty as I'm petty as hell, man. Like my, my other nickname is King Petty for a reason. Okay. Uh, there, there we go. Uh, what, what did you, I, I don't know if you got to catch the rest of the fights, but the main event, uh, Colby and Usman, what was it like getting to watch that fight? And what did you think of the fight? Cause some people felt like it was pretty close. Yeah, I think it was closer than expect. I was closer than I expected. Like Colby did half up to Colby. He did really well. They did. Uh, I thought it was going to be way, I thought it was gonna be a beat down, honestly, but like he, Colby's a dog, man. Like people hate him. Say what you want as a person, as a fighter, like Colby Covington's a dog. Mm-hmm. And, like, it sucks for Colby because, like, you're the number one fighter on the planet if Kamara Usman wasn't a thing right now. Like, you're the number yeah. one welterweight on the planet if Kamara Usman didn't exist. So he's definitely the second best welterweight on the planet right now. And I'm just like, it sucks, man. Everybody, every fighter has one guy out there who has their number. So, like, unfortunately, that's his right now. And then they will there in the same time. But, my God, man, like, you know, Usman's getting scarier and scarier every fight. What did you think of the co-main event, Whaley and Rose? Some people felt like Whaley won. What did you think of that fight? I didn't see all of it. I think I was showering, but like, I mean, Rose is a beast. Like people like to kind of discount her. Like, oh, she's got you know, she's mental, got mental, well, mentally weak, or whatever they say. Bro, Rose is called the Rose for a reason. She is a beast, and I laugh that people keep betting against her, and she keeps beating people up. I'm like, eventually, you guys are gonna learn to respect this woman because she's just. You get the name Thug Rose for no reason. So, like, you know, let them keep doubting her, and she's just going to keep beating people up. Did you catch uh, Poirier, or sorry, uh, Gaethje and uh, Chandler? Did you see that fight? Yeah, that was, honestly, that's one of the few times you get a fight so good, you're like, I don't want five rounds. And it was Sean and Strickland and I talked about it. We're like, you know what? That's a perfect three-round fight. Because, like, you don't, you don't want to see five rounds of that. We're just like, guys, that was amazing. One of the best fights of the year, hands down. Now, please, both of you go to a hospital. <laughs> so I think it was absolutely amazing. Three rounds was perfect. Five rounds would have been too much. We all would have been like, bro, make this stop. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. It sucks Chandler lost such a good dude. But, like, that's kind of a loss with an asterisk next to it. Like, do you really lose anything in that fight? Because that was just a hell of a fight. Are you staying at 85? Have you made that decision yet? Or are you going to kind of wait and see what opportunities are, you know, are out there? Because I know, like you said, you had a nice fight week. You didn't have to cut any weight. I mean, I like 85. Like, Phil Hall's definitely made me realize that I am way too small for 85, as I am. So, to stay here, I got to put on some weight because, my God, he's a big dude. Like, uh, I remember touching gloves looking at him, and I was like, man, I spent my entire career being the scary black guy in the fight. And I was like, ha, the first time I wasn't the scary black guy. My first thought was like, is this what it feels like? Like, my God, this feels horrible. So, uh I got to get a little bit bigger, but uh, I like 85, man. You know, I could always go back to 70 if I end up feeling, you know, out of my depth at 85. But right now, why not? Until, uh, until I get beat out the weight class, I might as well hang out here. Yeah, because I know also you said you were looking to fight in December. That probably would be more realistic just with the weight cut and not having to, you know, yeah, die it down and all that. I'm not in a month yet. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Yeah. Is, is there any update on that? I know we're a couple days removed, but I, I know in your post fight, you said December. Sign me up. I live in Vegas. Get, get me on the card. I don't think I can talk about it right now, but maybe. Ooh, okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, see, cool. Yeah. We'll okay. see. You know, close it up. The squeaky grill wheel gets the grease, whatever it is. So, like, yeah, they, uh, I'm hoping that this goes through. So, we'll, we'll see soon, hopefully. But I'm not. Fingers crossed.
There we go. Chris, thanks so much for doing this. I know you got plenty to do today. Uh, just remind people where they can get a hold of you on social media. And if you got any sponsors or shout outs, I'll give you the last word. All right. Um, as far as social media goes, they finally forced me to pick one handle and use it universally. So you guys can find me now on Twitter and Instagram at actionman513. No longer uh, any more of the craziness, the multiple nicknames. Actionman513, where I'm at everywhere. As far as sponsors go, I don't know right now. So I'll, instead, I'll thank everyone on my team at Extreme Couture. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thank my friends at uh, Freestyle MMA who helped me out as well. You guys are also great. And I want to thank my management company, uh, Iridium Sports uh, Agency. Uh, my manager, Lance, and Jason House, they uh, busted their ass to get me here after a whole lot of struggles. So much appreciated, guys. And everyone at the UFC that made it possible.